Hi, my name is Javier Albernoz, and today we'll be talking about insert effects in Pro Tools. We'll create some insert effects and see how we can use them and move them around in our insert effects chain. The most important distinction between an insert effect and a send effect is that an insert effect only affects the audio track on which the effect is inserted into or placed on. A send effect is placed on an aux input or a send effects bus and multiple audio tracks can be sent to that bus at varying levels. This way, not only can one effects plugin be used to affect various tracks, but you can also choose how much of the original signal and the affected signal is heard in the mix. I have a Pro Tools session open with a single audio track and my master fader. You can see both here in the edit window and in the mix window. So loaded on our audio track is a stereo mix down of music composed by a New World School of the Arts College student. Let's take a quick listen. Great. So what we're going to do today is look at the difference between inserts and send effects. So as you can see here in our edit window on this track, we do have a column for inserts and sends. And you can see the same here for inserts and sends on our audio track. Now Pro Tools by default is going to display the first five slots of each. But if you do go to view, and use the drop down tab in edit window views you can actually add you can see here f through j for inserts and for sends you can add a second row of slots for each of those the same is true for mix window views you can add your second row here right now we'll only need a few slots so we'll leave it just like that so when we are working with our track and we would like to add for example an eq that would more often than not be placed as an insert effect and the reason for this is is because an insert effect is going to be an effect that is going to be routed directly onto the channel so this channel gets input into the insert effect that goes in this slot and the output of that effects plugin will go either to the output of the track or to the next slot if there is a loaded plugin and then the next slot if there is another loaded plugin. So the order of these, your inserts, actually does matter. So let's go ahead and do just that and load an EQ plugin here. We're going to load a simple EQ that we can see here. We are going to make a pretty drastic change to it uh, so that we can just see, for example, purposes, we can hear the results pretty clearly. We are going to create a low pass filter. We're Ha our cutoff is at 250 hertz so it's pretty much just going to cut off most of the upper frequencies of this content so in the end the results you pretty much are gonna get music sounding like it's coming from the other room it's gonna dull the sound let's uh take a listen <laughs> Thank you. 
So it's actually a great way to get that kind of effect and you can play around with the frequency. It sounds like it's coming maybe from another room in the house or from a neighboring apartment or something like that. So as I was saying, the output of this plugin, which even in this specific plugin, you do have an output meter that you can actually change, is going to go as it is now to the output that then gets routed to the master fader. Or if we were to load another plugin, the output of this EQ is going to go directly to that plugin. So we are completely changing the sound because th there is no more original unaffected sound when you have an insert effect. The only way that you can actually achieve that would be if your plugin has a mix fader so that you can apply a certain level of the original signal versus the affected signal. But a plugin like an EQ or say a compressor is more often than not, it, you're not going to have that mix fader. Now a reverb, there you most likely will, but that's a different type of processing to the sound. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we add another insert effect to this slot. Let's uh, add a delay for example. Let's choose this delay plugin. So now again, we're gonna go straight from our EQ into our delay. I'm gonna give this a little bit less filtering so we hear more of that, but still are gravely affecting the sound with the EQ so you can tell what's happening for demonstration purposes. We go to our delay, which is going to cause repetitions of the sound or kind of an echo effect. And let's hear that result. So you can hear how now we're hearing the EQ effect plus the delay. Now, what happens if I choose to bypass this EQ? It, now we're going to hear the original audio skipping over that EQ going straight to the delay. Let's just catch the music somewhere around here. So you can hear that delay plugin and it even carries over once I hit stop. So now we are, again, not hearing the EQ because I bypassed it and hearing only the delay. Now, it uh, as I was saying before, the order definitely matters. So if I were to grab this EQ and move it here, we're not gonna hear a huge difference because of the type of effects that these are. But in this case, these, this audio is first going through the delay and then into the EQ. Now, I mentioned a mix fader within the plugin. Sometimes that's called dry or wet signal. And that's exactly what you're seeing here on this delay. So this is a way that I actually am able to choose whether this delay and how much of it is actually impacting the plugin. Uh, I'm sorry, the audio. So if I choose the dry signal and I can put it down here to zero, we're going to play back and we're only going to hear the effects of the uh, EQ plugin and not the delay, even though the delay is enabled. Now, as I turn up this fader, you'll start hearing that delay. And if I bypass our EQ, great. So you can see here how the different plugins kind of all lead into each other. And unless you have a dry wet control, they're basically just the entire input is being in going into the plugin and output to the next plugin or in the case of the final slot in your chain out of the track into your next bus which in this case is our master fader